Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Once you've learned to read logarithm and speak logarithm, and you've done a few evaluations of logarithms, what you're probably moving on next to is some properties of logarithms that will help us work with them a little bit more easily and maneuver these a bit like we're probably used to with some exponent properties. So we just wanna look at comparing our exponent properties to logarithm properties, show you where they come from because exponentials and logarithms are inverses of one another, opposite operations when they have the same base, right? We learned that early on about exponentials and logs. So our first property of exponents, when we have the same base and we're multiplying that together, we have two exponentials, then we can write those in the same exponential and add the exponents. So in other words, when we have multiply between exponentials, that becomes add in the same exponential. So a reverse property is true of logarithms. If we have two logarithms and they have the same base and we're adding in the separate logarithms, then we can put them together and addition becomes multiplication inside of a single log. So here separate exponentials, multiplication becomes addition in a single exponential. Here separate logarithms with addition between the logarithms becomes multiplication inside of logarithms. So here multiply becomes add and here add becomes multiply is a short way to think of it. If we think of the opposite property we have a base to some power divided by the same base to another power then we can subtract the exponents so if exponentials divide between the exponentials with the same base becomes subtract in a single exponential. So here, if divide becomes subtract over here, then that means subtraction between two logarithms with the same base should become divide within a single logarithm. We can use these properties to help us rearrange things and possibly even evaluate things that we're not quite sure of in their current form. So it might help us to simplify the look of an answer by what we call condensing them to a single log term. The idea if we have add between logs, making it a single log with multiply, or if we have subtract between logs, making it a single log with division. So our condensing will be taking multiple log terms and making them into a single log term using these properties. Let's look at some examples here. If I have log log of 8 plus log of 4. So first of all, our log base is 10, right? When we don't write a log base, then that is base 10. So log of 8 plus log of 4, I could condense them into a single log and multiply them. Addition becomes multiplication, and 8 times 4 would give us 32. So this as one single logarithm, which is a bit shorter to write, is just log of 32, 8 times 4. Here, log of 8 minus log of 4, we would take the subtraction between the logs, put them together in one log, and the subtraction would become division from our second property. So 8 divided by 4 would give us 2 inside of a single logarithm. Let's think about when we condense, and maybe that helps us even to evaluate a log that we can't figure out. Here in my third example, I have log base 6 of 4, and I have log base 6 of 9, and I'm adding those together. Log base 6 of 4, 4 is not a nice round power of 6 that we probably know off the top of our heads. Neither is 9, right? I know some powers of 6. I know 6 is a power of 6. 36 is a power of 6. But 4 and 9 are not common powers of 6 that we know. But if we use this property and put these together, then I should be able to multiply 4 and 9 together inside of a single log base 6. So if I multiply them and put them in the same log, then it becomes log base 6 of 36. And now log base 6 of 36 is really asking us what power of 6 is 36? And the answer is 2, right? Because 6 squared is 36. A similar thing with this, log base 6 of 30 minus log base 6 of 5. 30 and 5 are not nice round powers of 6 that we actually know off the top of our head, but if we condense these into a single log and make the subtraction into division, then 30 divided by 5 actually gives us 6. So we have a log base 6 of 6, and then we realize this is asking us 6 to what power gives us 6, and the answer is 6 to the first power is 6, so our answer is 1. We've already gone through our product rule, which is add between logs can become multiply in a log, and quotient rule, which is subtraction between logs can become division in a log. What we'll now go over is the last one that we want to talk about, the power rule for logarithms. So if I have a log base b, and I have something in the log that has a power on it, so my power is inside of the log, here I have log base b of something m, 
to the A. And that's going to be the same as taking the power outside of the log and writing it in the front as multiplication. So log base B of M to the power A is the same as A times log base B of just plain M. Looking at why this is true, so log base B of M to the A, think about what M to the A is. M to the A means I'm multiplying M and I'm multiplying it a times, right? I have a copies of m inside of the log. That's what that exponent means. That's shorthand for repeated multiplication, right? So I have a bunch of copies of m. Whatever a is, that's how many copies I have. Well, my product rule means that I could take this multiplication inside of my log and break it up into some adds, right? So each of those copies of m would be a log m if I break it up into a bunch of additions instead of a multiplication using my product rule. And then if I add all of these copies together, how many of them will I have? Well, I'll have a copies of log base b of m now. And so if I'm just counting them, how many of them do I have? I have a copies of them. So that's going to be the same as this a times log base b of m. So shortcut for remembering, if you have a power of something in the log, and it's the only thing in the log, you should be able to remove this, bring it out front of the log, and no longer have an exponent in your log. Taking a look at a few of these, we want to simplify 3 times log of 2 plus log of 3. So first thing we'll look at our power rule. I have a 3 out front. I could go ahead and do the reverse and put that inside, right? So that would be the same as log of 2. 2 to the third plus log of 3. Now we can certainly evaluate 2 to the third, right? That's going to be log of 8 plus log of 3. And now our product rule, if I have add between the logs, I can make that one log with the same base and just multiply these together. So my answer here, log of 8 plus log of 3, 8 times 3 will give me that this is log of 24, and that's much simpler than what we started with here. So here we have 6 times the natural log of 2 minus 3 times the natural log of 4, so we might think about making this 6 an exponent inside and making this 3 an exponent inside. So if we do that, that will give us natural log of 2 to the 6 minus natural log of 4 cubed. And if you figure these out, 2 to the 6 is actually 64 minus, if I have ln of 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4 is also 64. So we get ln of 64 minus ln of 64. And I think if we have something minus itself fully simplified, we would actually say this answer is 0 for this one, right? Okay, so other than putting logs together and making one logarithm, we may end up starting with something that's very complicated inside of a log, and we may want to analyze it more clearly by breaking it up into its separate pieces. So before we were taking separate logs and putting them together, now let's actually take a log with a bunch of stuff in it and break it apart. So we want to write the following as a sum or difference. In other words, we want to write with addition and subtraction with separate logs, and we also want no exponents in the end. So if we look at this log base 3, I have x squared times the square root of x plus 1 inside of it. So since this is a product, I could break this up using the product rule. Multiply would become add if I split them up into separate logs. So let's do that. So I'm going to have a log 3 of the first thing, log 3 of x squared. Then I will also have a log 3 of square root x plus 1. Now if we don't want exponents, we could take any exponents we have and move them to the front. I'm going to do that with this square here. I'm going to pull that out front. So if I want no exponents, I would say that's 2 times log base 3 of now just x. And then with this one here, this is not really written as an exponent, but I know that square root is technically the one-half power, right? So that's my x plus 1 all to the one-half power. So I'm going to move that square root as a one-half power also, even though it's not written as a number, as an exponent. I'm going to move that out front and say, well, I had the one-half power in my log, and what was in my log was x plus 1. Okay, so that's what we call expanding the logarithm, taking the log and breaking it up into simpler pieces rather than having a complicated expression inside of one logarithm altogether. 
Let's look at this other one. We have log, just plain old log, so we assume this is base 10. Log of the fraction x plus 2 on top and then x minus 5 is all cubed on the bottom. So this one, we will use the quotient rule because we have divide inside of the log, so divide becomes subtract between logs with the same base, so I'm going to keep my base 10 here. So that will become log of the first thing, x plus 2, and since it's division, we'll say minus log of x minus 5 all cubed. Now, I have a cube in my second log, and if I don't want to write with exponents, I can take that cube in my log and write it out front. And so this one, we might actually say log of x plus 2 minus 3 times log of x minus 5. So let's look at one that's maybe more complicated than all the ones we've done so far. We have the natural log of the cube root of x times the quantity x minus 4, and then all of that is divided by x minus 1 squared. So I really have three pieces, right? I have my cube root x, I have my x minus 4, and I have my x minus 1 squared. So these two on the top are multiplying. So we'll go ahead and say ln of the cube root of x plus product rule for the top here, ln of x minus 4. Anything we're dividing by, anything on the bottom of the fraction is going to be subtract, right? Division means the second thing will be subtracted. So division, I have divide by this x minus 1 squared. So I say minus ln of x minus 1 all squared. And now anything that's an exponent, we can go ahead and move outside of the log in front. Think about here, our first exponent is really this cube root. What power is cube root of something? Cube root is the one-third power of something, so let's move that one-third power out. We'll call it one-third ln of x. Here there's no exponent, so I'll just leave natural log of x minus 4. This last one here has a square, so let's go ahead and bump that out front, and we'll say minus 2 times the ln of x minus 1. All right, those are our properties of logarithms, some practice condensing and expanding, putting logs together, splitting them up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.